This isn't your first time in Davos, and the focus this year is definitely on trying to get the world economy out of its current crisis mode. Why do you think one of the key speakers was uh, Dmitry Medvedev? He was obviously showcasing of Russia as an investment opportunity. What do you think are the main hurdles at the moment that are not allowing foreign investors to flock to Russia? Because maybe they have better opportunity, and for us it's important to improve you know, our in our own situation and provide them with, uh, you know, uh, more predictable climate to give them a uh, more transparent picture. You know, practice should be changed. And I think that was the main reason why government and officials, you know, visited Davos just to show that they have a strong commitment, you know, to do this. What do you think is the first thing that needs to be done? What do you think the government should focus on to really address that? First of all, they should change management of central bank because what you said, you know, the whole country all around the world tried to cure a problem you know, which uh, happened in 2008 and we have completely opposite direction. We have a central bank which creates more problems for the growth you know, than try to support it. Well, speaking of the central bank, when you had the opportunity to speak during the Prime Minister Medvedev's session, the only thing you said was that Russia has two great banks, VTB and Sberbank, and that is certainly not enough. Can you elaborate on that? Can you tell me why you think that's not enough for a country like Russia, and what do you think needs to be done in this respect? Russia, not just Moscow, Russia, not just resource sector. You know, Russia is a waste opportunity, you know, from Vladivostok to St. Petersburg, from agriculture to IT, and uh, of course, you know, it, it, we should have a you know, better financial system, but no one could grow, it's not mushroom. It's not enough to have rain, you know, in the financial system, it's a commitment of the country, commitment of the, you know, state institutions, you know, center bankers, you know, people, you know, to grow proper infrastructure for capital market, for debt market. We already have a naive view on opportunities in the beginning of the 90s when we tried to build capitalism, not even democracy, you know, we, no, one, no one has interest in democracy, we have a glassness. And, uh, you know, we are trying to build build capitalism without capitalism, without market economy, without people who understand you know, how to run you know, enterprise, you know, private enterprise, and we fail, and this failure costs us almost two thirds of GDP. Now we try to develop country without debt market, we try to bring innovation, we try to bring um, you know, and use opportunity. Uh, or, or you know, to benefit out of WTO without comparing what cost of capital in Russia and with a country which we want to compete with Germany, with United States, with Korea, and we have a cost of capital you know which four times higher than than same cost of capital in U.S. three times higher in Korea, and of course it's uh, you know it's, it's it will not add you know us you know more opportunity, and this is what we should deal, and it's not foreign investment, it's not. Uh, you know, Know, for you know for foreign media or analysts it's our homework and we you know, haven't started yet well the cost of capital in many ways is tied to inflation so that's one of the issues that should be tackled would you agree with that no, but Russian inflation has no monetary base. It's everyone knows, even center back analysts you know, showed this. You know, and we not talk about you know, inflation in uh, in in the basic you know, you know, you know, you know, problem. You know, it's about the money supply. There is there is basic failure. You know, we don't have institutions who would provide. We don't have middle class. We don't have you know, uh, you know foreign investment which which could, which could provide money supplies. So it's only center bank, and center bank should not sit in comfortable chairs, you know, teaching us that there is structural problem, there is inflation which could be cause lying us actually about you know, you know cause what's going on you know in, with our inflation and with our cost of capital and with our you know, cost of debt. You know, and this is something which should be changed immediately. And how do you think it should be changed? And how do you think the central bank's approach could be changed? What is the main problem? Uh, what is the main reason for it being the way it is? Main problem is the people. If you look at the CVs, no one was in, in private banking. No one. And they run, you know, almost market economy. We still have a great, you know, state presence. We still have a lot of inefficiency, but it's it's ridiculous.
We need to have people who experience a problem. We need to have people who knows what's customer relation, what's true customer relation, and and solve this issue. Otherwise, it it will it will it could run forever. You are very uh, big on China, and uh, there's been a lot of talk this time around in Davos that Africa is going to be the next China. You have assets there. Would you agree with that assessment? No. What prevents them from being the next hot spot for growth? No governments, no stability, no competence, lack of education. You know, there is a lot of lack, lack, lack. Just, just a dream. You mentioned the WTO, and obviously that's one of the hot topics uh, for Russia in general. We have a lot of expectations, but you know nobody really understands how our economy is going to benefit from the WTO accession. How do you think it's going to unravel? If we will not change monetary policy, our economy will not benefit for sure. It's an opportunity. You need to use this opportunity. But again, if cost of capital and debt in Korea you know, you know, three times less than in Russia. Who would invest in components somewhere in Ural region and instead of, you know, to buy enterprise in Korea, you know, to have, you know, proper supply base, productive workforce and no barrier to bring this component back to Russia in assembly. This is, this is a reality. You know, it's not a charity club. It's what, exactly what we are saying, industrial people, you know, to our government. First, prepare economy. Try to recognize what sector would be developed. Try to organize support for this sector, and then you know jump into this shark you know, in the ocean. Well, do you think that uh, this lack of available capital is one of the reasons why Russia's economy is not diversifying away from its dependence on the energy exports at the rate that perhaps some would hope? It's one of the main problems. We need to have not just uh, you know sectoral diversification regional diversification now only four you know regions in russia benefit out of uh, development for the last 10 years and uh, i think main problem is a human perception still people would not look at the business as opportunity you not know, to solve you know many problems they still believe that the government should you know do some miracle and uh, you know provide solution which is a huge mistake and of course no one wants to support the business you know on um, on hard issues you know we talk about energy reform it's nowhere monetary we already discussed we talk about access you know to infrastructure we talk about investment in infrastructure you know we try to look at the development in in transportation sector in energy sector you know we try to develop a system when the customer through yearly increase in tariffs will pay for development of utility it's ridiculous you mentioned image and the perception that's really also been one of the main issues here everybody talking about the image of Russia not quite being up to par, not really quite being up to what the reality of doing business in Russia is. But yet, according to many surveys, less than 30% of Russians are actually interested in having their own businesses. That's a very low number compared to pretty much any developed country. Why do you think that is? And do you think it's a matter of entrepreneurs having you know, a bad reputation or having the wrong image, or do you think there are deeper underlying problems? I think to sort of the country recognize that uh, it's a hard work and you need to commit you know, almost all of your free time, you know, to, you know, to do it. We need to help them to grow and we need to reduce barrier, you know, to start the business. And uh, as I said, banking system, monetary policy, access to resources, infrastructure and true support of the regional government and actually fair budget system. Now we consolidate all money from a budget to the Moscow and then redistribute it. And actually it's key incentive for regional governors Meyer, you know, to develop something because then it would be equalized. So there is a big divide between the center Moscow and the regions. We all know about that. And that's also been one of the issues discussed here in, uh, at the forum on a global level, this divide between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots. How big of an issue do you think it is for Russia? Unless we will not 
move our capital somewhere in uh, in the region like Ekaterinburg, Novosibirsk, it, it will it will become even worse. And it's actually great wrong signal for the labor market. We have uh, we attracted so many people from ex Soviet Republic, which actually you know, create more burden for you know, Moscow, let's say you know St. Pete and region, Moscow region, St. Pete region, infrastructure, and actually you know, will will create more tension, and this is completely unnecessary. The only way you know, is to move capital somewhere not so close to Moscow as it decided now because it's another mistake and to try to develop same way like Brazil did, like Kazakhstan did, and it would be very beneficial and we solve a lot of problems. It looks like uh, China is really driving the demand in, in the metals and mining sector at the moment. Do you think that's going to be the trend going forward? Yes, because the industrial phase, they need more commodity to complete their programs. There was a cycle in China development when they have very fast growth rate in terms of consumption of these commodities and they create misperception in the world. It's over. Now you know, we need to rationalize you know, our output, not to meet demand, not to produce you know, waste and not to produce metal and, and uh, resources for the stock and this is a reality. It would be less investment in mining sector in the future, and to, investors should be very cautious, you know, to choose what project to follow. If there will be less investment in the mining sector, what other sectors are you looking at for yourself? No, we look at you know, Russian development, manufacturing, financial sector, and construction. In the financial sector, uh, what are you interested in? It's, it's a future story. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.